ever since the insolvency and bankruptcy code was introduced in 2016, it has become a successful resolution mechanism for stressed assets and revival of companies that are burdened with debts without adequate cash flows to back that. However, admitted claims continue to be low at around 30%, while creditors, specifically financial creditors, often have to take steep haircuts, sometimes as much as 70%, and this is only rising. Resolution of large claims is also a challenge, often taking several years. In many cases, due to the erosion in the value of the debtor's assets, liquidation has been the only option. Business line caught up with Akshat Khaitan, AU Corporate Advisory and Legal Services, a lawyer with decades of experience in corporate debt restructuring and insolvency, to understand how IBC has evolved and whether the bankruptcy laws are working successfully. Mr. Akshat Khaitan, thank you so much for agreeing to this podcast. Uh, there have been a few studies uh, recently which is showing that there has been a slowing down of cases which are going in for insolvency. How do you see the trend and uh, can you explain the reasons for that? When the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code in 2016 was enacted, the core purpose was twofold objective. One is maximizing the asset value of any corporate debtor which is the company and second is enhancing the time value of money. But during this journey from 2016 to 2024, where this code has seen revolutionary changes, the stakeholders started feeling that somewhere with and by entering into a mad rush by admitting cases into insolvency and bankruptcy and mm-hmm. conducting the CIRP that is the corporate insolvency resolution process, the objective is not getting fulfilled. Every case, every company, every situation is a unique situation. And when the goals are predefined, insolvency should be the last resort. Hence, we see that there is a significant downtrend in the cases getting admitted in IB code of late. However, the stakeholders, the creditors are resorting to amicable, mutual, consensual and other forms of resolution. Prior to insolvency initiation as a tool and only if they fail are they resorting to admit companies under IBC. Another trend which has been noticed and of course it has been there for a long time is that the resolution of the cases is taking longer and the creditors are having to take a very steep haircut. What can be the resolution for this? Whenever a credit is extended to a borrower, there are various parameters that are taken into account by a lender or a person giving credit. It is not only the asset. It is the potential of the business, it is the future prospect, it is the forecast, it is the background of the promoter. Now, unfortunately, in an IB code situation, the focus remains only on asset. While there are fixed assets, there are tangible and intangible assets, there are financial assets, there are assets in a company which are in forms of value additions never seen while the organizations are running. And when while computing the valuation, And while running this stringent process, the focus is not given on those assets. There is definitely a significant and steep fall. Also, we see that this situation arises because we don't have trained experts and professionals running this entire process. Because there are resolution professionals who are being trained to run the process, but not trained to understand the intricacies of business of the processes of which they are running under the IB code. Third, there is also a multifold approach due to pendencies, due to inadequate staffing, inadequate setting of tribunals, delay in appointment of tribunal members, rigidity and absurdity in decision making process, multiple intervention under section 60 subsection 5 by all stakeholders at every stage further acting contrary to the preamble of IBC. So the, till we have a uniform approach to all these factors, we are not going to have a surplus recovery or a surplus recovery bound resolution under the garb of IB code. In fact, another thing we have noticed in relation to this is that fewer of these operational creditors are actually taking recourse to uh, IBC. It is only the banks which are doing it. Lenders, how, how is that? It is a general saying now that when the operational creditor attempts to file for admitting a company under IB code, 
he is himself laying his debt or is due to the cremation ground because the process is such that under the waterfall mechanism the priority given to an operational creditor for his operational debt is last also what we have seen that the nclat and the supreme court in numerous judgments are very clear that the financial creditor who is governing and ruling the coc is the boss and nobody unless and until patent illegality is found will intervene with the judgment of the financial creditor and enter into the domain of commercial jurisprudence so we see that when the operational creditors are filing a case against a corporate debtor there is not much that they can recover because they know and on the contrary when the company is admitted there is a particular fees that they have to shell out from their pocket to recover such dues for the interim resolution professional now in such a situation where the operational creditors have started becoming smart and proactively realizing that they are debt is going to be laid to death bed if this company is admitted they have stopped in a manner to push companies and they have stopped in a manner to use this as a recovery platform only we see situations where settlements are possible where the assets are more than the liabilities or where the promoters want to save their company and not let the ib process run in their company is where the operational creditors are filing and are yielding full or recovery with interest against their operational debt recently we saw in the case of an airline you know, the resolution could not they they are trying to do it some reasons how can we avoid the like such and situation it is very sad alarming and disturbing that the pioneer airline of this country namely jet airways after multiple occasions of support and non judicial intervention also been granted by courts mainly the nclat and the supreme court has totally been failed and pushed to liquidation whereby the supreme court categorically records that it had no other alternative but to push into liquidation because the lenders are using losing money on an every second basis so it is very sad and strange but it is a great time for introspection that how on behest of a successful resolution applicant a company having huge stakes of public of its employees of its ex promoters is today going to be liquidated because of non compliance capital punishment of liquidation of bank guarantees of taking what is already in the control of the rp and distributing amongst the lenders is one thing but what about the accountability can anybody in this country run run away just by a capital punishment putting so many people on the stakeholders the answer should be no but is not no hence we have to be very very careful while this process is taken ahead and the judgment of vijay kumar jain where the suspended directors should be a part of the entire decision making process should be further strengthened whereby it should be mandatory that such suspended directors should be part of every and each coc it cannot be that they can run away just when the company is admitted into cirp other thing what the supreme court importantly notes is the incompetency and i am saying it in bold words for a reason the incompetency timely unavailability and non application of judicious mind by the tribunal members in this very case which has resulted into such a big pitfall ultimately damaging the reputation of this country and also of a code which was being appreciated cross border and now implemented cross border so it has to be implemented with absolute serenity and strictness going forward is the only learning that we can take and now it is important for the liquidator and the adjudicating authority along with other stakeholders to ensure what best can be done to even today sell this company as a going concern under liquidation to see the option of section 230 
where a scheme of compromise and arrangement can still be propounded at the stage of liquidation as upheld by the Supreme Court in the recent judgment of Arun Kumar Jagatramka. And uh, related to the, uh, you know, that the cases are taking longer, you know, the uh, the larger cases of more than 1,000 crores and all, do you think that should be, you know, having another kind of a thing all together, mechanism altogether to be dangerous? More than having different mechanisms, I would say that the decision makers need to have a broader framework of intent. We may have multiple frameworks multiple regulations, regulatory bodies. But it is important to realize who is working for whom. That is a very important question today to the lenders and to the creditors and decision makers. We as lenders sit in committee of creditors to safeguard our chair. But it is not like that. The approach should be how maximum possible recovery is and can be achievable. We see in a recent case of SKS Power, where Bank of Baroda gave interim finance to the resolution professional to run the company. And we have seen how that company has been resolved with almost full recovery to the lenders. So there has to be unique models which are available within the framework and regulations to be adopted, enacted, experimented so that the ultimate sole goal of maximization of asset value should be achieved and not with a sluggish mindset of just to recover between 5, 10, 15, 20 assets that have been mortgaged or hypothecated by a particular promoter with the lender. Thank you so much, Mr. Khaitan. Thank you so much for your insights. Thank you so much. Thank you.